Howdy, Hacksters. Got a follow-up for you today. We've talked to you recently about the Nordic Thingy 91, which is a cellular uh, sensor prototyping platform. It's got all kinds of things, temperature, humidity, altitude, GPS, uh, as well as orientation sensing, and a bunch of other cool stuff packed into one tiny little pocket-sized package. Plus, this thing has its own battery, and it can communicate over a ton of different protocols, so many that I'm not going to tell you them right now. We're going to take a look at the web page. But the point is, we have got a bunch of getting started guides for you uh, for this amazing device. It actually doesn't have to be plugged in. It's got its own power. But I'm going to show you uh, the sensor interface as well as our uh, getting started resources. So let's take a look first at the uh, Hackster tutorial, which you can find. Uh, in the usual places. Getting started with the Nordic Thingy 91 on Mac. It's actually a little bit easier if you have Windows, just in case you have to do anything complicated. But on Mac, it works just great. You can find uh, information on the Thingy 91 itself. Uh, Multi-sensor, <laughs> multi-sensor, multi-sensor cellular IoT prototyping platform. Easy to use, battery operated, uh, using uh, LTE-M. NB IoT and GPS. So it's named after this main chip that it has, uh, the NRF9160. And that is a low power system in package with integrated LTEM narrowband IoT, which is, it's only a few years old, a sort of newer IoT communication protocol uh, for wireless and GPS. And then you also have built in this NRF52840 chip which a uh, system on chip, which provides advanced Bluetooth 5, Thread, and Zigbee multi-protocol communication. So it's got a ton of stuff built in, and it's pretty easy to set up. It's got a micro USB connection, and there's a bunch of resources already available from Nordic on getting started. So they have their own video tutorial. You can find our uh, unboxing from a couple months ago up here at the top. And then you can also see Nordic's video tutorial for setting up, which is this thing. Uh, if you're a visual learner, I highly recommend this video. It's very excellent. It tells you where to find all the relevant information. Because the first thing that you're going to do is going to be to centralize all the information, including uh, numbers and identifiers from off of the module itself. You've got a pin on there, and then you have uh, an ICC ID, a pin, and a PUK for the SIM that goes in there as well. It's an iBasis eSIM that goes into there. And of course, that's interchangeable. So I recommend putting those all down in a single place first. And then you can update the modem and application firmware to get the latest functionalities using the NRF Connect desktop app. And this is a cross-platform app. It shouldn't matter. Um, very friendly. It's got a beautiful graphical interface. And I found it very easy to use, even as someone who's not super familiar with this kind of thing. So. Uh, you can download the latest firmware. It's easy to get that up and running. And then you simply charge it, and you can plug it in. Uh, it works while it's plugged in. It works while it's not plugged in. As long as it's got some charge, it'll be happy. Uh, you've got some LED feedback to show you whether or not it's connected. I'll show you mine right now. Uh, it's got this blue light flashing with a couple of LEDs. Some more breathing. It's a sort of breathing animation. And that shows that it's connected to cellular. And we're going to take a look at what that looks at, uh, like on the other end as well in the online interface. So I've got a couple screenshots here. Again, this is sort of a, a written version. And if you prefer to learn visually, you can check out the Nordic video that's linked at the top of this tutorial. It's right here. And they cover all this same stuff as well. So let's take a look at the online interface. Here we have this very device that I was holding in my hand a second ago. Uh, you can put devices in groups. It gives you a little status symbol showing whether or not it's connected. This is really exciting for me because before we just sort of took it out of the box, but now we've actually got it up and running. Oh, so good. You can see here a sort of raw feed of all the data coming in. We've got temperature, light sensing, air quality air pressure, temperature, humidity. Uh, and if we had GPS uh, connected, then that would be showing up as well. The thing is, uh, on the left side here, we have a GPS data window. And that is not showing anything right now because it's not set up to actually pull in GPS data. There is a uh, 
section on this in the Getting Started tutorial. You can find it down here. Mm -mm. You can manually enable the GPS as well. This is also stated in their official Getting Started guide. The thing is, if you enable GPS, then it will, uh, if it can't find a fix, then your data may be held up because it's waiting to try and get that GPS data. Uh, if you don't have a good connection, uh, if you're not outside, if you're somehow shielded and it can't find a lock, then it's going to slow down your data collection. So I have that disabled. Um, there's also a little connector on here where you can connect a separate GPS antenna as well as an LTE connector. So both of those, you can strengthen the signals, but as is, it already works in a really small package. So then we also have the asset orientation. I sort of let it do its own thing for a while, and then I inverted it in things with my hands. You can see here where I held it in my hands for a second to make the humidity go up. Uh, the temperature took a little spike when I was holding it in my hands as well. Very cool. You can sort of scroll in the timeline, get uh, closer in or further out. Very cool. Air pressure and the received power. Again, you can see that the signal went way down when I was holding it in my hands around 3.30, about 10 minutes ago. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, that's like getting started good. It's very simple. I wish that I had more to say here, but really all you have to do is go to those websites and check it out. I want to show a cool trick that this thing does. Um, when you have it unplugged, you can put on this adorable little orange rubber protector, which shields your circuitry, and it has a little cutout for the LED indicator here. Isn't that cool? It acts as kind of a light pipe to show the LED through it. And that'll give you a couple of different indicators. It goes purple if you have your GPS on and things like that. There's a little hanging mount here and you've got your battery. Let's see if we have any comments before we close up here. Ben Strahan uh, is on the chat and says, NB IoT, yeah, uh, yeah. Narrowband IoT is pretty cool. Again, I don't know that much about it because it's a pretty, you know, relatively new protocol. It's been around for a few years now, but I haven't done much with it simply because there isn't a lot um, in terms of maker hardware out there and developer hardware that's focused on NB IoT, uh, barring a few Arduinos. So uh, we have a, a comment from Duncan who says he managed to effectively brick his. He's going to have to manually reflash it at some point. Have no fear. That is a very easy process with the NRF Connect desktop app. And believe me, um, I sort of messed mine up the first time as well. But uh, it's very easy to get it back up and running using that desktop app. And that is included in the Getting Started Guide. So you're in luck. Give it another try. Uh, drop us a line if you can't get it working. But I'm, I'm pretty confident that you will. Anyway, that is the Nordic uh, Thingy 91, a really cool little device based on the NRF 9160 system and package and NRF 52480 um, system on chip. 52840, my bad. <laughs> uh, but check it out. We've got links to all that stuff in the description below. Have an awesome rest of your day, and we'll see you soon. Hack on.